We got Joe Robinette coming up right now. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Derek, and with me today is the only man who will use pine needles as not only toothpicks, but also a nose cleaner in reverse order, (laughs) Carl Mandrioli. That's a real hack, using pine needles as toothpicks. Are you serious? People have done that before. My bad. Just do it before you do your nose. Mm, Please. Questionable. Please. Welcome to the Backpack and Glitches Podcast. Everybody with me today is Derek Somerville. He's a man who never panics in the Canadian wilderness unless he sees one grizzly stalking him. That's the oh, bare minimum. That is okay. All right. Yeah. Moving on. All right. Yeah. Speaking of Canadian wilderness, we've got a Canadian bushcraft expert with us, Joe Robinette. Yeah. A million, million and a half followers, Carl. Is that, uh, More than that. More is that than intimidating that. to you? Is that, uh, that's intimidating so. for you. Intimidating you to talk to me? I feel like you feel nervous just seeing that number. You're like, I don't, I can see you shaking under your table. Under the table. And uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of pathetic. Uh, <laughs> how are you feeling about this interview? It's kind of pathetic. I feel like you. How would you, how would you rank good... your interview? How would you rank it? Okay, so what Derek's alluding to is that so yeah, so the interviews happen and we're just introducing it at this point. Uh, I'm gonna rate it like how it went, and not because of me, just mm. because he's an awesome dude. Is a ten out of ten. Ten okay. out of ten. So he's not a ten out of ten. Me. You were like yeah, two he, out of ten. Yeah. That's I'm accurate. always I'm always like yeah borderline one or two but he was yep. he was super fun to talk to and yeah so I how would you rate it you listen to it uh he was funny he was great uh he was. very personable um he kept he kept the flow going in your struggle no actually you did a good job you guys you guys <laughs> seem like you that's awesome he picked up your low self-esteem very well uh people sense that immediately (laughs) exactly no i think i I actually got the vibe if you guys went on a trip you guys could maybe have some fun that's okay i've got a response to that because we did talk about a trip yeah a different kind of trip so we'll we'll talk about that afterwards for sure yeah so but this is without a doubt one of our top guests of all time and this is one of my favorite conversations had on the show of all time i would say you're not just saying that because of the million and a half followers no, I'm saying I'm actually counting all the conversations you and I've had too. So including oh, all those, he's one of the most ones. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, good. was the conversation so good because you failed to make this one? Probably. Ouch. Probably. That was mean. I, well, that was I don't know. Nice. I mean, that's never nice, Carl. Sorry. It could have been an eleven out of ten if I was there. That's true. Saying. No, it's always better when you're there. Uh, well, okay. Well, I'll ask you afterwards on on the flip side what I missed, what you would have said or asked afterwards. How about that? All right. All right, before we get to that, we got our Bible verse of the episode, Proverbs 24, 27. Prepare your work outside. Get everything ready for yourself in the field, and after that, build your house. So, Derek, mm. are you a good prepper? Builder? Prep, prepper? <laughs> that sounds very, uh, you got to be careful when you use that word. I know. Um, it's intentional. <laughs> yeah, are there more doomsday preppers in your neck of the woods or my neck of the woods? I want to say it's oh. more like South States. I'm totally assuming here it's got to be my neck of the woods but i feel like the more east you go the more there are is that i think the more remote you go so and i'm not remote but i'm close to areas that would be considered just yeah not not necessarily i don't know like i'm within like a 20 minute drive of of people that would consider themselves living living off the grid for sure yeah because we don't to be fair like california we don't have room for bunkers here there's not a lot of room for bunkers we don't have basements there's a ton of room what are you talking about on, on a property, like what if you live in an apartment complex? There's no bunker room there. You, you feel just, like Colorado doesn't have apartments, is what you're saying? I feel like Colorado has more open space that you can just just walk on and do things. California has a ton of open space. <laughs> that was a dumb answer. Okay, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I, I know what you're saying. People, it's okay. If people like, my interpretation, preppers want to get away from government interference with things, right? Yeah. And California is the top state for government interference. Correct. Yeah. So no, we're not. Yeah. There's no. Yeah. So I think there's more in my neck. Those. That being said, I don't know of anybody that's into that stuff. You don't know an official prepper? No. Maybe but we I need to find you. Have him yeah, on the if show. you're a prepper at that, please reach out. We we, we want to. Man, maybe we could have him on the show. We should. Okay, let's have a prepper on the show. Let's do that. Let's get a prepper on the show. I've seen some TV shows where they have like years worth of meat and food in their bunker. Yeah. Just yeah. Snarly. We'll ask him. Okay, we'll get him on the yeah. show. That doesn't relate to this conversation, though. No. Okay, let's get let's, let's swing it on back. All right, we got Joe Robinette coming up right now. Do it. With me today is one of the most famous wilderness experts 
of all time, Joe Robinette. How's it going, Joe? Good, man. Thank you so much for, for joining the show, taking the time. Seriously, like this is our honor to have you on our show. So thank you. Oh, very nice. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. You. So, I mean, you're a, you're a big, at this point, like you're just a major big time influencer on TV, on YouTube. If you could take us back a little bit, like who, who was your biggest outdoor, outdoor inspiration back in the day? Uh, there'd be a couple, but like if I had to pick one, it'd be Les Stroud, Survivor Les Man. Stroud. He's okay. a fellow Ontarian, you know what I mean? And uh, one of the first guys that I saw that was doing it, that opened my eyes that it could be potentially something that I could do. Okay. All right. So I was going to ask you about this later, but let, let's just jump into this. So you shared, I, I've heard this. If you don't mind sharing the story, like he was your inspiration and then you like haphazardly met him one time. Do you yeah, mind sharing was, that story? Yeah, of course. No, it was awesome, man. I had done my first like bushcraft uh, course in person ever. And it was when I was living in Huntsville. Huntsville okay. is like uh, a couple hours north of Toronto for people who don't know. Okay. And um, I knew Les Stroud lived around or whatever, but I got back from that bushcraft course. My wife and I were like, oh, we haven't seen each other in a couple of days. Let's go to Blockbuster. When Blockbuster was a thing. Yeah, just a couple yeah. years ago, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aging us a bit. But, uh, right. Yeah, so <laughs> – we go there and my wife comes back to me like red face, just like Les Stroud's two aisles over. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. Like I had to go talk to him, right? So right. I go up and I didn't want to just be like another guy and like, oh, hi, Les Stroud. And I, uh, <laughs> a couple a couple years ago, I had written him because I was like, a, like I'm like fanboy of all fanboys, right? I had okay. written, him a, written him a letter, a handwritten letter. Because again, like it's it's a long time ago, right? You didn't really email people too much and stuff. Right, right. But, uh, right. And uh, he had written me back actually from Africa with a, a signed poster and everything, which I thought was super cool. And uh, Wait, so oh, I don't right. think I knew that. So he had like a sign, like, okay, what's the poster of? Is it like? It's him in like that hot air balloon okay. uh, episode, whatever, and just kind of signed right on. It was like, uh, you know, like not too big, but about that big. Okay. It wasn't like him and flexing like shirt like torn. I would have uh I would have I would have led with that for sure, but no. <laughs> so I would have got that frame. You can see that behind me right now. No. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think I'd put that up in my house. Like, I don't care if I'm a fan, but I'd be like, yeah, I kind of want your shirt on, not like sweat glistening. That's kind of <laughs> Okay, so he'd sent that to you from Africa, which from I imagine Africa. Yeah. while he was shooting. Right. Right. So Africa to Canada, I'm guessing like the, the, the postage chances of success are pretty low. Yeah. And the, the fact cost, that it made it's awesome. And the cost probably pretty high. So it, right. it, meant, it meant even more, right? I was stoked. Um, so I led with that and I was like, dude, you sent me a letter from Africa one time. He looks at me. He's like, I did. I was like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You leave the whole spiel. He's like, yeah, man, I maybe wrote back like two people. I was like, oh. sweet. So I was one of those guys. Yeah. And then we just uh, sat there and talked for a while. And he said, I'm having a book signing uh, at the, I think it was called like the bookcase or something. Right. Um, in a couple of days. So I went there and, and chatted him up for a while there too. Gave him a little extra little note I wrote for him. And that was it for a really long time. But uh, we actually got in contact again maybe last year. And yeah. um, exchanged a few emails and stuff. Wait, did he reach out to you this time? We know we said... <laughs> Uh, we were both at an outdoor adventure show and, okay. uh, yeah, he was promoting his, uh, new survivor man VR thing and, uh, went up and talked to him and I, I, I yeah, we had a good little chat and, uh, he's like, Oh, we'll have to do something together. And I was like, man, don't, you know, you don't, wait, don't. Wait, 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 did he know, did he, does he know, like, did he recognize so, you? So we, it, this came full circle, man. Like, um, one of the TV shows I shot for, Actually, both TV shows. Uh, sorry, one of the TV shows I shot, and then another another uh, pilot I shot that hasn't gotten promoted yet was with his old film crew. Okay, okay? so he okay. was on his own for the most part, but he had a B roll crew, right? Right, right. So I, I got to know Les Stroud, Survivor Man's film crew. At, then they were shooting a film, a film, uh, a show with me. They were my film crew for That's like crazy man half a year. It was yeah. nuts. So it was like this full circle thing for me. I felt really good about it. Right. But I got to, I got to know them pretty well, and then so when when I saw him there, I was like, dude, like uh, blah blah blah, and he's like, oh, you're, and we kind of he didn't recognize me like that. I I would yeah. love to say that he did, but he didn't. And uh, okay. but we it took him a second. So, but he said, you're the guy that was with my film crew, not you're the guy from Blockbuster Video. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not you're the, not you're the guy who wrote me a love letter. To right, me. right. Yeah. Okay, so are you suggesting in sort of like this roundabout way that so he sort of passed his film crew on to you? You've been on TV. 
I'm now having this conversation with you. Am I due for like my own film crew? Am I going to make a <laughs> show? <laughs> well, it... I'm not. I'm not a fortune teller, but okay, know. okay. I but... yeah, that's so funny. I got I got a backstory. This is not about me. It's just kind of funny. <laughs> All right. Um, you haven't like met Bear Grylls at like a Toys R Us by any chance, have you? Is that is that not. part of your story, Reptor? No, but uh, no, I haven't. No. Okay. You know, if I was British, maybe. Yeah, that's right. I don't know if they have Toys R Uses over there, if you even have them, but <laughs> like anyway. uh Bins of Fun, bin, Bins of Joy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's like a 50% chance that's like a real thing right there. <laughs> Apologies to any Brits or uh that's hilarious. No, I love that. Okay, so over the years, people have gone to your YouTube channel. Like I mentioned, they've seen you on TV, been on the Alone TV show, which is like getting increasingly popular. Yeah. But they followed you. They've sub subscribed to you. Like what's what's the biggest connection point, do you think? Who are you connecting with the most? What's your audience? It's just normal people. Like it's they're not like crazy adventurer people. They okay. don't have to be like uh, super right or left. Either way, I think I'm just nice and – Right down the middle, for the most part, like I got like hardcore hunters following me. I got hippy dippy guys following me. I got canoeists and backpackers, and I got four wheeler people following wow, me. Wow, okay. And I got old grannies and families, <laughs> really? and people, people that leave it on for their dogs while they're going to work. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. good. <laughs> like right. honestly, like I can see in my demographics when I look and stuff. Like the majority is it's men, and it's like right. you know, our our age type thing. But I get comments and messages from all sorts of people all over the world, which is okay. awesome. Doomsday preppers. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Which I'm not, hey man, I got nothing. I've been watching some Doomsday Preppers lately. You know what I mean? You don't know what's going on in the world. You don't know what's going. Yeah, that no, I I find it fascinating. I find how people prep, and I just find there's the story or the concept fascinating. And then I think back to you know, like recent events. Like, and part of me wonders, like, are they are they semi rooting for the apocalypse right. so that they can use their You're stuff? Validated right? even exactly. <laughs> yeah. So like, are they bummed at Y2K? Where they, you know, where they bummed like COVID wasn't like it was bad, but it wasn't like doomsday bad. <laughs> Dude, my, I have like matches and fire starter that my grandparents gave me from when they bought for Y2K. And they're like, oh, I guess it's going to expire type stuff. Like years ago, <laughs> gave it to me. Like. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just had this conversation with my wife. So because I was hyper aware of Y2K and like I was actually working at an REI at the time. And so people oh. were coming in buying like books and all sorts For of stuff. Sure. But I don't know that I personally knew anybody who was like legitimately freaked out. Did you, is, was that a thing for you? No, except for my grandparents. They, for moved, them, yeah. they moved, they bought a house in Northern Ontario. They lived in Southern Ontario down near Detroit, say area in a farm, yeah. farm country. And they sold their house and moved like up far, like out like ten hour drive north. They were so worried about it. Okay, stuff. that's yeah. So, so I haven't heard those stories. That's interesting. Yeah. And so, did, were they embarrassed afterwards? I don't know. Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're old people. If they were, they weren't gonna let on. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just like that's just. That's what we're we fine. Did. We actually prefer it now. Here, this is better. <laughs> we love black flies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, when I, when I check out your channel and then, you know, like watch all of the things that you get to do and that you accomplish, the way that you put it out there, at least the way that it comes across to me, the viewer, is you live an adventure first lifestyle, but you're married with children. And I forget how old your kids are. I know they're, they're on the younger, they're younger than my kids, they're on the younger side. So how do you structure things to be able to pull this off? It's like, I, I, I'm just really blessed, man, in every, if, every sense of the word. Like, uh, so, my eldest is 12 and I started this before she was born. Okay. So it's, it's nothing new to her. You know what I right. mean? And my youngest is five now. And, uh, obviously she's, she's born into it as well. My right. wife, <clears throat> my wife and I came from nothing, man. We, 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 we worked our butts off for a long time to get, pardon me, to get even a normal life. And, and for the longest time we only had the one kid for financial reasons. You know what I mean? Right. Um, we for seven both, years basically exactly yeah we both come from nothing and we weren't about to overburden what we do so oh man 
What was the question? I went blank. I just was wondering like how you structure it so you have this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's like my wife has always been so supportive, like extremely supportive. And even if it wasn't about money, even if I wasn't making a ton of money or whatever, if this was just something I wanted to do, then she'd be just as supportive as well. So like I go away I, I, and, and she worked and I worked two jobs for the longest time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we, we, until we both understood that this was um, at least for the, for the time being something that would support us both. So she was able to finally quit her job and stay home with the kid. And I would still go away and stuff. And when I'm home, I'm home. You know, I mean, I'm not right. out at the, at the bar. I'm not out at my buddies and none of that right. stuff. And I never was, even when we lived, like we moved away. You know, I mean, now we're now we're out in the bush. And even when I, we weren't, I wasn't doing that okay. stuff. Like at home when I'm home. But um, but I was gone a lot. Don't get me wrong. Like I'd have to leave. We we lived near Detroit, right near Detroit. There's nothing. Right. So I would have to drive at least eight hours one day. I'd be gone one or two nights to make it worthwhile. Come back home edit for one, two, three days and then go again. And for like 10 right. years, for like 10 years, I did that. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? It was, a, it was a big strain, but it's like at the same time that was, everybody knew what the goal was and like everybody was okay with it. And it's just, it's getting harder now to go away for farther, farther for longer because everybody's older and they're expecting me to be home a little bit more and stuff because I have been lately. Um, it's a little bit like, it's not a good feeling leaving to crying girls. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Cause that's happened before. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, it just, it's, it's, it's been the norm for okay. so long that it's just is what it is. Right. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So it's almost like the traveling salesman where you're, you're gone for a short period of time, but when you're back, like fully engaged, exactly. Like you're the dad, you're the husband. You're yeah, and then, then when they say, like, oh, I don't want you to leave, Dad, well, I said, oh, did you like to eat breakfast this morning, honey? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I will, like, I'll tell you what, I won't leave next time, and we'll just skip meals. How about yeah, that? Be yeah, that'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> that's, that's one way to say I don't know that, like, like a five-year-old is going <laughs> to <laughs> Oh, no, they Maybe, get me because I've said it a million times. Have you? Okay. Get that, it. That's like a saying in your house. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> that's a Joe proverb right there. There you go. Do you like yeah, to eat? Yeah, that's hilarious. So I don't know if you – I mean, like I know you're a hard worker, and you've been building for a while now. But if, if you go back into the archives of your videos, some of the earlier ones, like I, do you ever go back and watch and, and it? And you kind of like – I mean, you almost put your heart on your sleeve. You're like, okay – Here's where I'm at now, man. If one day mm-hmm. I could do this full time, it'd be great. Like I just put out a video; it got like ten thousand views, and you're ecstatic. Like, do you ever go back and watch those, and you're like, man, I'm so blessed that, like, that's kind of the beginning, and look, kind of where you are now, I guess. Yeah, certainly. I go back. I go back and look at them often. I have with the kids, and that's cool. Um, yeah, no, it's good. It's good to see Scout, the old dog, where I started yeah. off with, and uh, right. and to see where we've come and stuff. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's 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 a good grounding thing for sure. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Let's get into the nitty gritty, man. We so one of the things that I think is makes your content very approachable is that you, you you do things that like other people it's like seemingly can do. It seems it seems just achievable for folks, and so. I'm looking for three of the most important bushcraft skills that you think every adventurer should know, whether that's, you know, everything from backpacker to people that are going to be just camping out there to somebody who's going off the grid, maybe even your doomsday prepper, like three that you feel like are achievable. What you got? Yeah. Like being able to reliably start a fire, even in the rain, start Uh, a fire in the rain. Okay. With or without, without matches or whatever you have. Okay. Um, ideally with a fire steel, because if you can do it with a fire steel, then you can do it with whatever, you know right. what I mean? For the most part, as long as not a bow drill, but like man-made stuff. Okay. Um, so, for, so on that one, is there like, we've heard different tips and tricks over the years and we've talked about them on our show, but from your perspective, if there's one thing that maybe gets overlooked in terms of like a strategy for starting a fire in the rain, what's one thing that people should just kind of be aware of three, uh, like five times the prep. And don't be afraid to throw all of your wo- your thin pieces of wood on at the same time because that blocks the rest of the rain coming down. Oh. And, and while you have while you have all that stuff getting ready, like even if you don't have if you're in a like a, a SHTF, like you don't have any kind of gear or whatever except for your knife, 
Mm-hmm. I'd be grabbing leaves and boughs and bark to cover okay. up my prep while I'm waiting to use that certain prep while I'm shaving the other prep, trying to keep everything as dry as possible. Because again, you're coming from the inside of a stiff, right? Right. Like the inside, you're you're creating dry wood. So you don't want that to get wet while you're creating the rest of the dry wood. Okay. And then, and then like five times the prep, as much thin, 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 thin stuff as you can go. Okay. Very, throw it all on at once and then yeah like you could you could start a fire in some wet stuff for sure okay um so yeah I done, say- i'm not a fire starter we, we've got a guy in our crew that does that he's really good at that um my co-host derek's very good at that and and i feel like i'm getting better but yeah i'm always open to new tips and tricks for sure yeah man it's just muscle memory with the fire steel too like yeah um, but yeah okay so i'd say that i would say navigation and like regardless if if that's with and I know you're saying bushcraft tips, but like maybe you're gonna start to, to look at the na- at the landscape a little bit more for that type of uh, information. Be it like, and then by navigation, I also mean like time. Like you know what I mean? You're you're telling like how far the, the sun is in the sky with your hands. Mm-hmm. You, you're like rise in the east, sets in the west type right. thing. Do you um, think people need to know how to use a compass? It's map weird. Compass. This day and age, it's hard to say, but like, yeah, you can't rely like a map and compass. A, a map's not going to break. You know what I mean? Right. You people, lose it, but yeah. Yeah. The, the problem with the compass is people don't trust the compass half the time, which is right. great. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I think it's a, it's a super, super important skill to learn. And like, it really took me a long time to learn that a map and a compass. Um, I, I go by my, my phone for the most part, to be honest with my, my, my apps on my phone. And it's okay. like, that that's cool and, and until it dies or gets broken and stuff so right what's your uh, go-to app avenza okay avenza gotcha. uh, yeah it's a free and it, i can just download the topo for for the area and it's, it's right. amazing i it's it's really helped me a lot um, i have a theory that like with the map and compass thing I, it's, I think this is not probably not true as much anymore but for years people were bringing for backpacking trips specifically they had the map and the compass, but they didn't really know how to use the compass. They just had it because they felt obligated to bring it. Yeah, it is a weird thing. Like, unless you get trained on it, it's hard to know how to use it properly. Yeah, for sure. Like, we were always told to put Snoopy in the doghouse, that little red. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah, I, I was taught red in the shed. There you go. <laughs> Same thing. Similar thing. Yeah, for sure. All right. So you got uh, navigation, fire starting in the rain. Yeah. And, um, uh, I don't know water procurement. I guess like okay, because what are you gonna do if you don't have water, really? So water procurement, like in the backpacking world, most people have filters or you know worst case they boil water. But would you say water procurement uh, without a filter? Yeah, and then that comes down to like what what vessel do you have to boil it in? Are you going to do you have a metal pot? If that case, then you're 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 laughing, or are you like putting hot rocks in your leather hat to try to freaking you know what i mean like which is not a fun I haven't deal. Heard that one hot rocks <laughs> well, in the leather hat it is what it is right <laughs> or like creating like a, 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 a like a underground seepage type filter type thing which right. who knows i don't know i'm not even versed in that you know what i mean right. but water water you need you need to know where you're going shelter building would be awesome as well but like you said three yeah three yeah i was thinking through your answer there so like is that a thing like like hot rocks in the yeah hat? like yeah so if you can contain water right yeah and in, in, in whatever vessel it is you can boil that water now with with piping hot rocks from your fire okay so you transfer them into the water vessel whatever and that water will start to boil and then you okay. can drink that, that it'll be very sooty very yeah, nasty not- it's not gonna be great but like no parasites. Okay. So that's a plus. I'm learning, man. So, all right. And you, I'm guessing you use some sort of like extra clothing to transfer the rocks. Some sort of like, almost like a pot holder. Sticks, whatever. The case okay. be, yeah. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. All right. There you go. Three bushcraft skills right there. <laughs> um, all right. So you, like you put out a variety of videos, but, and I, I'm guessing just from your content, it doesn't look like you're running out of ideas anytime soon, but, I've got ideas for you anyway. So, okay. so here's my question is I'm going to give you three ideas for videos. Which of the three would you be most willing to make out of these three? Okay. All right. And you can say more than one, like if you're impressed because, um, <laughs> these are impressive. I believe it. I believe it already. <laughs> All right. All right. Number one, uh, go survival camping with a celebrity chef. 
he or she has to make anything you hunt, fish, or gather into a fancy meal. If one would come with me, that sounds amazing. I okay. like to eat. All right. Well, I can help. I can be the go-between because I, right. I can, I'm not afraid to reach out to people. Okay. <laughs> uh, number two, you have to spend 48 hours with a Hollywood diva on a deserted island. You got to no. teach them based on your saying no. <laughs> no. <laughs> this Unless... more to this. You got to teach them bushcraft skills, including how to go to the bathroom, and you've got to field their complaints the entire time. No, you, you didn't win me over with the rest of that. No, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't improve. <laughs> no, oh God. okay. I was thinking like like Simon Cowell or like a Kardashian was what came yeah, to mind. Like, with like if it was a guy, maybe, but like I'm not. Yeah, like I would just not put myself in a, a scary situation like that. Okay, Simon Cowell's like the guy from the Got Talent show, so he would just be judging you the whole time. Yeah, I'm used to being judged though. Okay, I'm pretty well, good at that true. now. When well, you put yourself out there, okay. All right, so rejection for that one. All right, last one. <laughs> Plan a weekend survival trip in a location of your choice. You put the trip on eBay ahead of time as an auction. The winning bidder gets to join you. Money can be given like to charity or to me because I came up with the idea. That's an amazing. I would go with that one for sure. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you ever do that? Yeah, I would do that. Yeah, but like you would have to help me facilitate that like you said. Yeah. Okay. I could yeah. – well – but I mean, it's a risk, right? Because you could have, I'm, we'll get into this later, but think about all of the YouTube comments you've gotten over the years. Nobody, nobody who has said a bad thing to me will uh, bid on it. Because okay. So no, no one on the internet right. who says a bad thing right. has any intention of ever seeing that person in real life. It would never say those things to that real person in real life. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, yeah, they're like anonymous, right? Right? Yeah, but would they... I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be worried about that. What I would be worried about is, like, putting someone's life in danger out there. <laughs> yeah. That's what I would be concerned about. You'd have to have some, like, fail-safes, right? You'd have to have almost, like, um, just kind of, like, some, some stuff stored away a little bit or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah i feel you i feel you some emergency gear some like extra yeah. food i don't know um, other thing i'm trying to think of who would bid on that somebody that obviously wants to hang out with you somebody that thinks they could do it from yeah. so we we've gone we've taken folks on backpacking trips with our patreon crew before and it's been a like it, it truly has been a blessing but that would be cool we've experienced that people think they can do more than they can do and so mm. i could i could imagine that being a situation as well yeah, honestly, man, I had like a I had a bushcraft course, a school one time, and I and I just I I felt so uncomfortable with every class because it was like I felt responsible for people and I didn't want anyone to get hurt and you know right. what I mean I just like I was legally covered, but it was like what if somebody puts an axe into their shin? I just don't want to deal with oh, it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. I uh, mean, professionals that. do that, right? Professionals will mess up sometimes. Like my. Oh, for yeah. And so, so it's, yeah. So, so for like an amateur, somebody who's learning, of course, like it's way more likely. It's like how, the, the lay person has not used an axe in their life, right? So it's like an awkward thing. And until you get used to it, all it is is muscle memory. But I don't want to be the <laughs> person to sit by and watch that develop. You know what right, I mean? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You'd have to have the, you know, the emergency beacon, the, the red button ready to get pressed Everything, yeah. on the spot. Okay. Well, we can, we can like, shelf that but that's <laughs> that's awesome that you're even considering that okay so i got some alone questions like i'm, a, I'm an alone fan I, I watch it all like i love the show i'm not somebody who'd ever be on the show like i'm i'm an extrovert and for me just being by myself after like a couple hours i'd be like all right that's great now i'm ready to talk to somebody but i just have this like yeah respect for everybody that goes out there so i've got some i know i know you were season one and it's been a while mm -hmm. but uh so okay first question there's been, I don't know what season they're on right now, but there's been quite a number of seasons and there's been quite a development. They've kind of changed the structure, different types of folks on the show. Do you have like anything to share a perspective, kind of a reflective thought about kind of how Alone's evolved or anything from recent seasons or any I, thoughts about Alone? I Zero. I honestly, man, I, and you can use this. I don't care. I have su I had such a sore, bad taste in my mouth about the whole thing. Okay. I never, I never watched an episode past where I tapped out. Did not know that. Okay, you, okay. When on the tap out episode, though, like I know you seem frustrated. You didn't, you didn't seem like you had a bad attitude, though. Like you seemed like you handled it pretty well. 
So that's well, thank, thank you. I appreciate you yeah. saying that. No, I uh, it was uh, it was crushing. I okay. had to wait a few hours for that that helicopter to come, and like it was it was real bad, man. Okay. Well. So, okay. So don't talk about alone. Is that what you're saying? No, I don't. No, you're good. You're good okay. to talk about alone. It's fine. Okay. No, no, you're good, man. Well, let, okay. Well, let me. All right. So one thing that came up, like as I was as I was actually researching for um, this conversation, was so I watched like when I watched your portion of it, I don't remember this actually being on the episode, but there was a scene and it's currently on the history channel website where it's like, before you get dropped off, it looks like you sort of like gather everybody around. And this is like, mm. again, season one, nobody knows what they're in for. You gather everybody around and you, and you pray over everybody. Is that? That's right. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Can, yeah. You, can you share how that, how you're like, I just felt compelled to do this. Or the I, yeah, I, that? I was raised born again, Christian, like, um, big time speaking in tongues the whole nine yards and stuff and and i've been um on on and off throughout my life leaning into that and then not leaning into that and um at that point in my life and maybe it was a bit uh for the wrong reason selfish i mean i was trying to get favor with god who knows but i was at that point really leaning into it i just thought that that was the right thing to do and yeah some something that i wanted to do okay the reason why I, I like, I don't know, it really connected with me was because, because of how you're doing it, like it, people get so focused on the task at hand, or in this case, like it was a competition. You're literally surrounded by your competitors. You are compete and you don't know the outcome, but you're competing against everybody. And you're like, you know what, let's take a moment and let's, let's pray. And I just thought that was super powerful. So well, and in, in all honesty, I knew it was like, it could have been a dangerous thing we were doing too. And like, I got to know right. those guys pretty good. And like, we all got along for the most part pretty well. Like, okay. and uh, like we were the Guinea pigs, man. You right. know what I mean? Like we oh, were, for we, sure. We were season one. Nobody knew what to expect. Nobody knew if this, if the, if the show was going to go anywhere, nobody knew if we were going to be safe. No, like how do we trust these people? Honestly, we didn't know. Like right. they, they they were so um, unorganized for that first season that like we were supposed to be out there months before we went out there. We went out there in the peak rainy season, and that was not supposed to be the case. Right? Oh, interesting! I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Oh no. Yeah. Lots and lots and lots of craziness. I could go for hours about it. Okay. But, so when you when you tapped out though, in the back of your mind, were you thinking they might not come? No. <clears throat> because I did after, un uh, like I understood, like they were they were there to come and like they came and checked on us right away, like you know what I mean, like maybe yeah. three days into it, two days into it, came and checked on us and uh, no, I had faith in them after for that part of it, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but well, before we went out, exactly, yeah, sorry, before we went out, I didn't know, nobody knew, and so I was just just kind of hoping that everybody like survived as well type thing, which of course everybody did. But, Okay. All right. So I, I last question on the loan. If you said you're sore about it, you haven't watched an episode since. I don't I know if you. Say, I wouldn't say I'm sore about it anymore. I was super butthurt about it for a long time, but okay. I just, I just can't bring myself to watch it. So maybe I, I am still sore. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. That sounds like something I would say is like as you're talking through, you're like actually maybe. It's still no, wait, actually maybe I am. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I mean, they've had like one. I think they've had just one season. You, you probably even know this, but they have a season where people returned. No, I and I could this. see them yeah. doing it again. I don't know if they invited you or they if did. you would get. Oh, they did. Okay. Yeah, they did. So weird. I've been invited back twice. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I don't know how many seasons they did that were like redemption seasons or whatever. Right. But like, I thought for sure I'd be a shoe in, and I did get asked, and I, pardon me, and I hummed and I did get asked, and I hummed and hawed about it quite a bit. And this is when like I was doing really, really, really well on YouTube, and I didn't want to take any time away from it, and. I knew that the only way in other people's eyes, because like I got roasted hard, like I got hate, hated, 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 hated when I got. Oh, off. I didn't know that either. Okay. Oh yeah, no, just like through the ringer, man. Okay. Uh, it was as if I, I I offended them personally. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, no, it was crazy. Okay. So, and and, it, and people think like I built my channel because of alone, and it's like it's completely the opposite thing. Like it was in spite of it. Like I, I right. it hurt, it hurt my career, my okay. career. But anyways, this is when 
I was doing really good. I didn't want to take time away. And in my head, the only way to make it worthwhile is if I win. And if I stood up right now and lifted my shirt, you would see how skinny I am. Okay. <laughs> okay. No way that I'm going to win alone. Right. I, I know it. For okay. me, for me personally, if I went out there and I lasted a month, I would be vindicated personally. Okay. Right. But I just thought at the time, I, it's just opening a can that I don't financially need to do. Okay. You know what I mean? And I don't really have the desire to do that much anymore because I've done a ton of stuff now at this point and it, it's only going to hurt my channel. So I just right. saw three strikes, you know what I mean? Okay. So I, I said, no. Um, and then I got another ask again and I said, yes, this is a, a while after. And then I never heard back from them at all. Oh, interesting. So I'm not sure if they just didn't do that season again or if right. I didn't get picked again or what. I don't think they did it again. Okay. I mean, they've done, they've had some returners do like, I don't know. They've had these like spinoffs with alone frozen where it's like, you guys yeah. survive 50 days in the winter. I don't know if it was for that, but, uh, do you think that they invited you back because of your success? That you well, said in spite I, of alone? Who knows? I know that when we tested out for the first seasons of alone, there was supposed to be like 10 guys, eight guys that got picked up originally. And they were like, I was in the top three of that. They were so blown away by everything I was doing, showing them skills wise, talking to them, everything. They were super, super stoked on me. So right. they, I think that they thought that I was like going to do well. Right. You know what I mean? Or whatever the case may be. So I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I, I'll ask you about a different TV show then. So <laughs> there's a show. I don't know if you've seen it. They filmed one season so far. It's called something like ultimate survive or race to survive. Alaska is what it's called. Hmm. And so what they've done is they've combined the concept of a race where you're moving from point A to point V, but then once you get to point B, like you've got to, like, you know, use some survival skills and maybe like gather food or fish or it's, the first season was clunky, like straight up was clunky. They've since filmed season two and they, and I somehow I got connected with the guy who is like, rec he recruits people to cast. And so I talked to him and he's like, Hey, if you want to be auditioned for this, like, let me know. We're going to be doing that, doing that later this year. And I was like, I was like, all right. So would you ever want to team up and do a show like that, Joe? A hundred percent. That sounds amazing. Okay. That very cool, cool you gotta go vibe. it's like two people and yeah so it's like combination fitness and survival that's what it's and then it's like i i, I absolutely love like a like a grind you know okay. what i mean i really do i've been on some crazy distance uh canoe trips some yeah. backpacking but more canoe trips okay and uh yeah i, I love that style of stuff no, they do. I think, that, well, at least the first season, I haven't seen the second season out yet. The first season, it was a mix. Like there was a lot of on foot stuff, but they had on the water stuff too. They had like canoe type things. And then they had, I don't know. It, 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 I bet the second season and even third season would be a lot smoother and more clear. But, um, all right. So you're saying like, like if, if I were to get a hold of this guy, yep. I say, I've got a guy, big time Joe, he's a survival <laughs> expert. He said he'd be on my team. You'd be willing to audition for it. Is that right? Yes. After knowing me for like legitimately 30 minutes now. 100%. Okay. You're in. <laughs> I am in. It sounds fun. It sounds I mean, fun. It's, it's different. I mean, it's still like an elimination show. So it's like the last team to point B. I think they, they take off the show. Well, that wouldn't be us. Yeah. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. It depends on how our bodies held up, I suppose. Because you said you're skinny. So you're not, you're not burning that extra fat as much. And um, I would certainly train for it. But. Okay. All right. I'm going to tuck that away and see if that comes yeah, back yeah, around. Yeah. So cool. All right, I'm going to mark this one. I'm going to save this clip. <laughs> I'm going to publish it 10 times and yeah, brag about it too. There you go. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for digging into seriously the alone. So I know that it, I didn't realize it was a sore subject. I wasn't trying no, to. No, it's fine. And like, honestly, yeah. it's not even like a, like, it's not like I'm sore about it now. It's just like, okay. I just, I was for a long time and I just never turned it on when I saw it now, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. uh, in all honesty, if they asked me tomorrow, I, I would probably go do it. Okay. I don't, I don't really? Much, I've got much going on, and uh, I got a little bit of a fire lit under my butt right now. Okay. I might go see what I could do. Can I put on some pounds, though, right? I'm going to a couple, two, three. I might weigh like a buck 38 by the time we get out there. Be all right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, so... 
So when we have somebody who's like a bushcraft survival type expert, like you already mentioned that you got quite the range of folks that, that, that tune into your channel. I guess here's a behind the scenes question, if you're comfortable with this. So yeah. like you have an eclectic audience, what's the craziest, weirdest, like off the wall reaction you've ever gotten to a video? Oh man, I can't even, I don't even know to a specific video, but like I got like, a dude who who created a, a channel just about me what yeah it's crazy okay. and like and like just like puts me in the thumbnails of it and everything and like that's is that legal me. can he do that legally i don't know man Probably. i've never i i'm just not the kind of guy to give a care about it you know what i mean yeah it's like i can't look at it because it infuriates me so i just leave it alone okay but um, yeah, man, I got a guy who created a whole channel to hate me. Oh, to hate you specifically? To, to hate, oh no, to hate me, like the oh. whole. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it's bad. Yeah, it's not oh, wow. good stuff. No, no, I no, thought it was like bad. super fan stalker guy. Oh no, no, super like hater stalker guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Real bad, real bad. Is it okay? I don't know. You probably don't check it very often. But is it? <laughs> it's not getting many much traction, is it? He's got a couple of videos that got some big views on them because they got sensational titles and thumbnails that okay. are crazy. If you just type my name into Google, this will probably come up. Like probably be maybe even before my stuff now, which is crazy. Oh. Maybe not before, but right at the top. Okay. And it actually hurt my channel a lot. He's probably be happy to hear this, but it, it really did because he said a lot of lies about like anti like american type stuff which didn't which is completely oh, completely a lie i'm not that guy at all right. so it's great yeah it's crazy man crazy You're talking to american right now so there you go yeah man yeah. i learned i learned from american military guys dude that's where i learned my stuff i would fly to missouri and ohio and and iowa and learn from a seer guy like i i, I got yeah it's crazy okay. but but the, here's the thing people are gullible man and people are are super right. wishy-washy especially online and it is, it's, it is what it is. And I never once made a reply. You know what I mean? I never yeah. once acknowledged it. Never know because I just didn't want to validate it with any kind of stuff. And I figured that the, the real people would understand the real thing. And it's sad right. at, at the amount of people that, that would just believe some random dude that after you've been watching me for, you know, 10 years, 15 years, however long somebody says something and that's just mm -hmm. what you go with. It's right. crazy, but it is what it is, man. This is like this is uh, pulling up my heartstrings right now because I feel like one of the things I have the hardest time with I've, I've realized now is is false accusations. Somebody makes a false accusation, especially people that make the accusation without investigating. Now, if there's just a hater out there, that's one thing. But you're saying, obviously, people are buying into it, and so oh, yeah. they're, they're so they're kind of like equally as guilty at that point without doing the investigation. It's wild. You don't have to yeah. investigate anything. Just trust my character for two seconds. Exactly. You know I mean? Yeah, and I think <laughs> you let your character shine through. Like people are going to realize who you are. I've never like been you're the not the always. one. Yeah, you're not the one bashing the other person. And and yeah, I don't know if you want to. Yeah, kind of hitch your ride with a person that's like you know building their channel based upon negativity towards somebody else. Like I think that's revealing the character there. So that's a very unfortunate. But it sounds like you're handling it okay because it sounds like oh, you're. Yeah, pushing on. It is what it is, man. Like you okay. can't stop it. I've I've dealt with worse. So like I've dealt with real life problems. You know what I mean? This is just right, some right, guy right. on the internet. For sure. There's a guy. So something similar happened in the backpacking world where there was a guy. He was actually pretty early on, uh, fifteen thousand ish subscribers on YouTube, and somebody saw the trajectory that this guy had, and so he's like, and this guy was you know like at forty thousand, and so he he took it upon himself to, um to point out and to question characters similar to what you're describing. But I think it had the opposite effect. I think it actually drove people to the channel. Right. And I think hopefully you experienced something similar. So, yeah. I, yeah. At this point, man, whatever, you know, everything's yeah. kind of just, it, it's not so bad. I think that okay. guy's kind of got, I actually think that guy kind of got tied up in some real life trouble, which is pretty, yeah. pretty fitting. So, right. What percentage chance would you say, um, he would be as a bidder on eBay for the trip. <laughs> Actually, he might be up there. He's that bad. He might be up there. He just wants to have it out with you. I don't know. Yeah. Make false, false accusations on camera. He, wa he wanted to. Not. He wanted to get in the ring. He, he he made a whole video how he wanted to fight me. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, that's next level stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. 
All right. Yeah. Je- jealousy is a strong. Yeah. It causes some bad things, man. And that's what it is. It's jealousy. Right. I'm right. Saying. All right. So what can we look forward to on your YouTube channel or anything else you've got going on this year? You mentioned, I don't know if you can reveal, but you mentioned you, you filmed something. I don't know when that's coming out. Oh yeah. No, I can't really say much about that. We're hoping that it gets picked up. I filmed a pilot of another TV show with some uh, well-known Canadian television people from okay. back in the day, uh, hoping that uh, it's an outdoor show, obviously hoping that right. it gets picked up, but who knows? Uh, other than that, man, like, um, I hope to do some really big canoe trips this year. Okay. A lot more stuff with the dog. Wolfie's uh, is my new dog. He's doing really well. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, just more of the same, man. Like, I, I haven't put out a video in a little while. I've had some stuff going on at home recently, and we're renovating the basement. And okay. uh, got kids' birthdays and all, all sorts of stuff. And I just uh, I felt like it was time to take a, a little step away, which isn't really that great for a YouTuber, but... Uh, right. after doing it for like going on 18 years, 16 years. Is that right? Years. I didn't realize it was that long. It's been a long time, dude. Yeah. Uh, so I, I kind of needed it. So that's okay. I'll do that and, uh, and get back to it pretty soon here. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll keep plugging away and yeah, I'll have a link for, for Joe's channel in the show description for those of you who have not seen it. It is yeah. Top notch for sure. And Joe, man, thank you so much for taking the time to join the show. This is, like I said, it's an honor and a privilege and just appreciate your stories and your wisdom of course man let me know about that uh tv show really okay <laughs> <laughs> i will let you know yeah <laughs> all right all right we'll catch you later all right buddy all right so what'd you think about that what did i think about that i, I guess the he was fun he was a lot of fun uh, i liked his uh all of his little strategy talks. I'm glad you learned something from them. It's great. Talks, pep talks. About fire you starting. You surviving. actually gave me a compliment. <laughs> like I was a pretty good fire starter. So that was, I appreciate that. You're good. You're um, right. You started fire in the rain. I don't know. You haven't started one without matches in the rain though, right? Without matches in the rain. Pharaoh mm, rod. I'm trying to yeah. think of all the gear I brought. No, yeah. I have not. Okay. No, not, that might be a, a next on the list. Yeah. Um, we so my question here's what i wanted to know why didn't you ask him if he would be on the amazing race with you like that was your opportunity oh interesting why don't you just go for it yeah because yeah. you're my guy i know i'm your guy but like he's a good plan b you know yeah like, look, i'm gonna ask Derek, but if he can't make it would you want to do like okay be backup we'll circle back to that because i actually do have a thought on that but are you are you trying to like get out of the amazing race no no okay. no no Dude, it's fun if we do it together, man. Like it I is. It, it would be more fun. You. It would be more fun. Yeah, and I'm sure I'd have a great time. With, like he's a great, great dude. I'd have a great time with him. Sounds like he's all in on TV show stuff as well. But no, yeah. man. Like this is this is my yeah. invite for you. This is for you, Derek. That makes a warm, fuzzy feeling in my heart. You I can't regift it. an invite. I can try. I can try. Okay. All right, so let's okay. So I invited him on this race to survive show. It's like yeah. they did it season one, Alaska. Season two, they haven't released where they did it yet, but it's been filmed. Right. I think it's not coming out to like August or September. So it's it's like you know it's in the can, so to speak. Okay. And then yeah, so we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. we'll see if I get an audition with him. But um, that'll be hilarious. We'll find out. We'll find out. But I yeah, like chances are always low when you're talking with with me involved because true yeah but you were talking about being on the show alone and you were saying like you could maybe last what like two days me i can no a couple hours a couple hours a couple hours yeah i'm not an alone person Ooh. i'm not seeking to be isolated I know. every once in a while oh, i like I to recharge and go off and go for mm. whatever a run but i don't want to i like mm. being around people you're a people person i think you were i don't know if you still are Ew, gross uh, am, I, am I right? Like you used to host events and then suddenly now, like any I moment you get by guy. yourself, you're, you're, you value it beyond anything. I think, well, I think because yeah, I used to be the guy that planned everything. You're right. You're right. Uh, I think as you get older and you have kids, you're around and I have, I have like extra people in my house all day. I know. I so know. I think by that time I'm like, God, I get away from everybody. So I, sure. I am around people all day and it's fine. We have a great time. Like play games yeah. and stuff, but it's, it's, uh, you know, you need a balance. I need okay. a balance. I'll tell you, if we oh. were on the Amazing Race show, we could hang a sheet between, you know, if we had to, like, share a hotel room, yes. hang a sheet between the beds and be, like, you, you have your own dare time. Maybe and add a little that. foam to block out the snoring sounds. But, yeah, other right. than that, I think we'd be we'd be good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's, be fine. Anyway, let's get back to the <laughs> guest here. Um, <laughs> all right. So he his top three bushcraft stills, you already mentioned the one, the fire with no 
matches in the rain. Navigation skills, like basic navigation. navigation skills. Do you agree with that one? Do you have that skill? Where are you at with that? Yeah, and he talked about this. We've we've mentioned this in previous episodes where it's like, well, you can't like the technology's great, probably awesome and super accurate, but then what if something happens, right? Like, what right. if you break your phone? What if you know it doesn't work? Whatever reason. Um, he's like, you can't really break a map. And I'm like, true, you can lose it, but you can't like break it. So yeah. I, I we've talked about this, uh, how important it is to be able to read a map with some degree of skill mm -hmm. to help get yourself out of a sticky situation. I had to do that a couple times on trips without you. Actually, we got it was snow the pass or the trail was snowed over and we had to use the yeah. map and circle back and cut the trail in half. But that being said, the last opportunity you had to navigate with a map, uh, you, you failed. Uh, I don't know about that. It's been a couple okay. years, but we yeah, I was in Yosemite. We were doing an off trail se segment and we were looking for camp. One was at a lake and we never found the lake and you were semi in charge. Semi. Ooh, yeah. that's, that's a, I don't know. Like, thing. like what I was in charge about? too, but I was also filming and it's hard to film. Oh, so, oh, so you got an out, you got an out. Well, you tell me, can, can you film I don't even know, at the same time? What are we talking about? Uh, we didn't find it, so of course you're, you're Mister. I've been to Yosemite fifty thousand times. I yeah. know this back in the back of my hand. I right, can, right. I do. Yeah, on the trail. I can tell, not I off can, trail apparently. I can tell bears where to go. I'm so familiar. <laughs> it's like you know, that's what I get from you. Yeah, I think it's called Nelson Lake, and it was just yeah, this segment. Yeah. We yeah, we didn't do very well. We, there was a lot going on. <laughs> there was, it was like a yeah disaster zone trip. But anyway, all right. The last one was filter water without actually a water filter. Could you do that? I'd like to try. I don't think I've tried that. Okay. I Remind think I've watched me, what, enough survival shows where I think I actually could do that. What would you do? What would you, what would your strategy be? I, I mean, the hope is you have some sort of container and I would fill it with right. um, like things that could sift out the gunk. So like you want to have like, you know, sand and rocks and then you want to mix in some charcoal at the bottom to take out any viral stuff there. So you and, go into a fire pit randomly, grab charcoal. Yeah. Throw or, it in Or there. my own fire pit. Not, not necessarily like I'm not going to. Yeah. But the key, what he was talking about is you need to have some sort of like a vessel, right? He was talking about even like right. that leather hat, throwing the hot rocks in. And I don't know, like I've seen a lot of survival stuff. I haven't seen that. I probably have or forgot, but I haven't seen that technique. So. I did this in a chemistry class, actually. Okay. We got like sewagey, gross water mm -hmm. and we threw it in this filter with all kinds of sediment and whatever. When you say sewage, ended... you're talking about like pee and poop, right? No, no. I'm talking like, I don't know. It was like pond. Let's say like pond water, something gross. Okay. And we ended up filtering it through it like sand, grab all the stuff. Yeah. And we, and we drank it afterwards. And it had a taste. It was great. Okay. <laughs> so it sounds like you know how to do it. Sounds, I mean, sounds I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't bring all the stuff with me, but I, I you know, gave no, you No, but you could, me. you could kind of, you know, make do and figure it out. You're, you're resourceful. You can make do. Yeah. I can figure I, you know. This is why some... you'd be a good, amazing race teammate just right there. Oh, well, you know, I like to create things on the go. Okay. Solve my problems. I leave right, what you. did you think about um he ha he mentioned this i'm surprised like he was willing to talk about this because I, I felt hmm. felt bad for him bring this up but he has a youtube jerk making oh so great a channel based on lies and false accusations about him i like that he said like he just doesn't care right um <laughs> yeah but i think even even your you least not? sensitive person like it's gonna you know like it's gonna i feel like bit. at a certain degree be like dude okay joke's over right like to get a guy to hate you that much yeah what does that say about the guy i guess i'm gonna it's kind of sad it's really yeah. kind of sad it's it funny sad. but it's kind of right. sad i would never want to follow or subscribe to a channel that was that that's like the, the goal or that's the purpose so true true but on his end is it like any pr is good pr even bad pr is good pr i don't know that's a good question that, you know Maybe. like people see that and they're like what this guy's that bad let's see it yeah and then they go over to it and they're like actually he's kind of cool let me subscribe do you we know? need to have that do we need to have somebody that makes a podcast that just mocks our podcast an anti b and b youtube channel like seriously how would you handle that derek like would you you let's say you listen in on a couple episodes would it hurt your feelings if they're mocking you or how would you feel about it like like let's say like like full-on false accusations what they're saying is like straight up not true and it's going to be called like day packs and soft feet <laughs> <Sure>. um i <laughs> i think initially i'd be kind of flattered like wow they have this much extra time to really dedicate to yeah. naysaying everything we say right. I, I i think i i think i would kind of find it funny actually I don't okay. think it would really bother me that much. Because yeah, if you get somebody scary. who's hating you that much, it's like clearly you have some issues of your own. And I'm not yeah. gonna like, you know. Right. Would you would you what would you do? Do you need me to console you? 
I don't know. Like, like I, we had somebody, we had somebody you could like, this is earlier this season who had a really negative comment and I tried yeah. to handle it as graciously as possible. And it's still like, I don't know. It just didn't like the, it just wasn't a nice person. Like it just was not, not a nice person. Right. And like, yeah. uh, like right. Joe was saying, like it's an anonymous person. So I think the way he handles it, he's like, I'm not going to even acknowledge that this thing exists. I think is the way to go. He's, right. he's smart right. about that. So that's what I'd have to do. I think you would do that. Yeah. I think it, yeah. You put, and put it in juxtaposition to like a celebrity, right? Like movie star, like how much hate yeah. they probably get. Uh, and we get like one know, out of like, whatever. It does give yeah. you some kind of like minimal understanding of what that would be like though. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Imagine if people just followed us around with cameras all the time, making up stories about us, you know, like the amazing race, like the amazing race. Exactly. <laughs> so if you're listening, amazing race, race. Um, you want talking about this. We had an episode recently at this, we had like a bonus episode a couple weeks ago on the amazing race. And so, uh, Derek and I are gonna have a conversation soon and we're going to see if we can actually put together an audition video. We'll see if it works, but, and if they're listening, our email is backpacking blizzards podcast.com. <laughs> What's that? That oh, if amazing we'll race is listening. <laughs> just in case uh, you know? that's so funny get let me ask you okay so i asked him like i gave him those three scenarios about videos he'd make and he was like in on the ebay thing as far I know, as like, yeah, like I know. donating to charity or whatever would you that was funny okay like i get what that I if bid? we did something like this we might get bids of like you know 50 two bucks. or three dollars yeah but w just for fun would you ever do that for say our july trip just be like hey we're gonna throw out on ebay and then the money goes to charity to you know we pick a charity or whatever and then whoever wins gets to come on the july trip and you know we have to like make sure that you can physically handle it but you get to come on, on the july on the trip july trip you have this to hang out with derek trip. and rocky which is just madness mm. i know that it wouldn't get that mm. much money i know that it's just like it'd be a for fun thing but would you my question is not like but i guess my question is would you do it would you actually be okay having some stranger that you have know nothing about just come on um, a very intimate backpacking trip on that trip no i, I don't think yeah. it would be good because I think yeah, that's yeah. the trip that we try to look forward to with our, our buddies. And we yeah. see each other like once a year, everybody. So it's, okay. it's kind of like fun to connect. And, and you know how it is. Everybody knows how it yeah. is. Sorry, I got something on my microphone. If you have if, if you have a group of your friends and you can discuss things a certain way, joke a certain way, then you throw in some rando. Nothing against mm -hmm. the rando, but it just changes everything, you know? So right. I think for that specific trip, I think that'd be a little more challenging. So you're but not. I think as we try to make as them. Joe, as we were trying to say. You are not, not. as adventurous as Joe. Okay. Uh, but again, is Joe going on big group trips every year? I don't. You know, he goes. Okay. Oh, he goes on lots of trips, like like lots of trips, yeah. and he has. Yeah, he's got different folks that go with him, but right. his is structured differently than ours for sure. So fair enough. Correct. Did you like his Les Stroud story? Oh yeah, when he he was like fanboying it. Yeah, yeah. I that's love pretty that cool. Story. Love that's that story. pretty cool. Yeah. Last thing I want to say is so we've had. A lot of people suggest that he come on our show over the past few years and anybody that's ever suggested him or seems to know him or follow his stuff has called him Joe, uh, Robinet. And mm. that's not, and it is Robinette. Like that's how, like he actually has a video about that as well. So for right. those who don't know, like that's how you actually do pronounce his name. A lot of times people, when you're watching them on right. TV or on YouTube, they don't always like say their name or maybe just spell right. on the screen, but that's how right. you say it. it's going to. Anyway, just for fun. fun thanks, back. thanks for clarifying that. We were all very concerned. About there you that. go. The, the more you know, right that. there. The more you know. Whew. Okay. All Wait right. Time. So uh, you got trivia this one, right? We got trivia, uh, and it's going to be a doozy coming up right after this. So all right, what you got, my, man? Let me pull up my page here. Hang on. I'll say it again. <clears throat> all right, we got uh, wilderness survival trivia for you today. Three questions. Okay. It relates. You, <laughs> this is rare for you. I know. Well, th <laughs> what do you mean rare for me? We got to see if we can survive. We're just gonna no, see. It survive. relates to the episode. A lot of times you're like, we've got random trivia. Like literally. I'm sorry. You know what? Trivia. Let's get. You know what? You're right. <laughs> Car tire trivia coming up right after. Oh wait. Okay, we're already back. All right. Okay. Number one. Uh, where would you find dry tinder in the rain, Carl? Would you find okay. it on the inner bark of cedar trees? Mm -hmm. Under the rocks covered in in lichen, like the little fungus thing. Uh, under moss, would you find it? Oceans under ocean spray flower heads. Where would you find <laughs> dry tinder? I don't look at any of those spots. <laughs> dry tinder. So that's like really fine stuff. The really like the thin, thin stuff. The fine stuff. The fire yeah. starter stuff. So the just, uh, just, under just the break rocks. it down. 
Under, Under the, the rock. Rocks with Lichen is incorrect. Okay. Inner Bark of the Trees, dude. Inner Bark of the Trees. Wait, no, 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 no. That's not what you said. Cedar you, trees. Not say, you said like under the bark. Inner bark on cedar trees. Okay. Re, what does it say on, on your question? It just what I said. It says inner, inner bark. You said on inner, I thought you said under the bark. So we can talk about um, we can talk about miracle ear options after the show. <laughs> I don't have time for that right now. So <laughs> okay. If you were unsure, we'll just repeat the question. All right. So All right. So so ask me again. Sorry. Ask me again. Ask me the same. Too question. late. Too late. You already missed it. Um, inner bark. All right, here we go. Uh, let's do this one. Let's see. Number Okay, number th number 2. Are you ready? Here we go. What is the most important caloric calorie source in survival living? Is it sugar, fat, carbohydrates, or protein? What do you need the most What's the most important one of those to survive? Oh. I'll give you a hint. It's you want a hint? Sure. Do you need do you need a hint? Yeah, well, I know it's it's between two. I get it. it's down to two. Oh, so what is it down to? What are you are you gonna take my hint away if I tell you? Probably. <laughs> no, just give me the hint. <laughs> just give me the hint. Um, bear. The hint is bears. Okay. I don't. <laughs> okay, so it's it's between protein. <laughs> I'm gonna go based on what I know from the alone show. So okay, it's and then we also had a guest on last year who talked about this as well. But it's between fat and protein. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy on the alone show who killed a moose and then he like stored the fat somewhere and then he oh, stored the, just the meat somewhere. Right. So he had it separated and then he like a badger or something got to the fat. So all he had was the protein left. And so he's got plenty of calories or protein, but he continued to lose weight just eating the protein. And huh. so I think it's the fat. Correct. It All is right. the fat. Fat All reserves. Right. That's what the bears eat up, and they use their fat reserves in the hibernation period. Okay. They'll eat the berries, too, so that's why that's going to They'll eat the berries, too. They'll do it all. Okay. Uh, good job. One for one. Got to gotta pass this last one here, though. I know. I'm nervous. This is this is, this is is a big deal. All yeah. right. Here we go. A little, little, little paragraph on this one. Here we go. Your friend fell out of a tree trying to get honey from a beehive. <laughs> Let's say it was Rocky. <laughs> He fell 20 <laughs> feet and was knocked unconscious for 45 seconds. Something okay. Rocky would probably do. You know from your training that he would, he should be monitored for 24 hours. But which mm -hmm. of the following signs do not indicate a serious head injury? Is it? Okay. He's done this. So no head injury. Complaints of blurred vision lasting over an hour. Does that indicate a head injury? Okay. Unus unusual tiredness or sleepiness. Mm -hmm. A headache that increases with intensity. Okay. Burps that smell like sulfur. <laughs> or unusual loss of balance. Which one does not? Does not. It's, it's not as straightforward as you think. I'll just say. Wait, how many options did you give me on that one? Five options? Is that right? That's that's the way. That's oh the way. Oh my gosh! You asked me sometimes when I give you four options, and usually one of them is absurd. I I got this from Wilderness See, College. This question is from I, yeah, Wilderness. I know College. you don't make up your own questions. You have a hard time with questions. <laughs> not true. Good. Okay, it's either the it's either the, one of the last two. It's either the burps, but I know that people can throw up, so the burps mm. would imply that loss of balance. I could see mm. that being true as well, though. Okay, look, give me this. I'm gonna, I'm down to the last two. Am I right? Is it one of the last two? I'm not gonna tell you that. It's not as straightforward as you think. All right, I'm gonna go balance. Incorrect. Okay. It is burps that smell like sulfur. Okay. If your burps smell like sulfur, that means you have probably giardia. Oh, fun fact. Yeah, I didn't know that either. All right. Well, so I was if you smell like okay. eggs, if you smell like eggs, let's get you down the, down the line, <laughs> I will you know. accept this trivia loss. Those are some you good have questions, to. even though you gave me five options in the last one. Just more to choose from, my buddy. All right. More to choose All right. from. So we'll, we'll do a trivia update after the next episode. We'll, we'll, we'll have it kind of narrowed down here. Uh -huh. uh, okay. All right. Tidbits. You ready for some tidbits? Right. Tidbit. Okay. A few weeks ago, we had Chris Hazard on. He was the expert on the gps you know locator beacons right uh yes yes okay so literally the week that we released that episode the company that licensed the name motorola that they're made they make the motorola defy i think it's like bullet or something mm -hmm. they claim bankruptcy that same week huh yeah so we so he'd recommended that as like a you know kind of a budget option and I was looking into getting one, and I think it still currently works. But if you're looking at, I would I would really research whether that's something you want to buy at this point. So really bad timing on our episode release on that one. 
It's a bummer. So, yeah, it's yeah. a bummer. Yeah. Oh. Um, circling back to the Amazing Race, we put out that Amazing yeah. Race episode, and I got a comment like same day from a guy who attends the B&B Bible study named Ben from California. And he, he works said, for the Amazing Race? No. Oh. No, quite the opposite. He said, uh, if Derek mm. doesn't want to be your teammate, I'll be your teammate, Carl. So... <sighs> There you go. You got some competition, Poppy, Derek. Poppycock. I don't, I don't, I just ignore that. You don't believe that? You don't think you'd be my teammate? I'm going to say that. Okay. I think he just wants to get in there and get the action, but you know what? It's not for sale. You think I'm he sorry. wants to be on the amazing race. You don't think he cares about me as a teammate, is what you're saying? Correct. And he's, he's not using me to get on the race. Yes. He's not looking out for your best interest, Carl. You know, you're probably, you're probably right. Okay. I know about your shoulders. Who can heal that on the trip? <laughs> me. This guy doesn't know about your shoulders. You're snoring. You're whining. You know, <laughs> it's a whole thing, buddy. Careful oh what you gosh. ask for. Okay. That's right. That's right. All right. And then we got, we got a review. Remember we, we put out there, we got bribery stickers. So this is from oh, Dr. Right. Ned. Dr. Yes. Ned, you want a sticker, man? You, you earned it. So send us your address and we, we got it coming Dr. for you. Dr. Ned. Dr. He's, Ned. I, like I think it. I know who this is. Cause I think he's posted on Facebook a few times. He's listened to our podcast since the beginning and he, he likes the banter and OG. he likes the bible verse and he says that while his opinions about backpacking are often different than theirs huh. they made me question and refine those opinions this is interesting this is like a rare feedback here especially in regards to nalgene's and tent footprints well we're we're Boom. reaching people carl we're reaching i'm the one that said that stuff people don't okay. take credit Derek. come on okay let's let's yeah. not be immature about it okay my hands are up <laughs> let's not be elementary about this okay you want thank all the you, credit dr take ned it. it's dr ned we haven't had a review in a long, really long time so thank you we just feel like people are still listening out there carl carl is feeling like 100 percent right now so oh, ned, i feel well great done. now i feel great somebody told me they want to be that my you know my racing buddy like your race, race partner like a and, fake invite but whatever yeah i'll take it I'll take and it. And you got so, less people to use footprints and nail jeans. Good job. Thank you. That's all Good I got, night. my friend. That's all I got. Guys, hope you enjoyed the interview and with Mr. Robinette. And we will hopefully get a prep run for you or some other crazy episode coming up. Check out the social media handles at backpackingblisterspodcast.com. And if you want to see Carl filter his own water with his greasy hat and some sand, let us know in the comments. We'll see you next time. <laughs>